Let's talk resolution. I shoot in 4K resolution. Personally, I want the highest quality video possible. If your computer isn't the most powerful, then maybe shooting in a lower resolution would be more ideal for you. Aspect ratio. 16 by 9 because who owns a 4x3 TV anymore? You can use a 4x3 and crop it down to 16.9 in post, which gives you some more control over the angle of the camera. You know, some other guys were using this for a little bit. I just find it too much work. I prefer to get it right the first time and just leave it. I personally shoot at 30 frames per second. However, another option that you can use if low light is more of a priority, you can use the 24 frames per second. And if you're wanting slow-mo, then you definitely want to shoot in the 60 frames per second. But mostly, all the time, I'm just shooting in the 30 frames per second. Super view all day long. The field of view, I feel like, is something that GoPro has set itself apart from other action cameras. You just don't get that beautiful wide feeling with the DJI camera or the Sony weird action cameras that they have. Let's talk about Hypersmooth. While boost is what makes the Hero 8 mode just ridiculously smooth, the crop needed in order to obtain it is not worth the trade-off. I leave it in the high mode and it works fantastic when paired with Super View. Now, the ProTune setting is something that is going to be dependent on you and how much work you want to put into the files. If you are going to go in and color grade and really edit your footage, then definitely turn on ProTune if you really want to fine tune your settings. I use ProTune. With the GoPro Hero 8, we get the addition of the high bitrate setting, which gives you 100 megabit per second output on the video files. In all honesty, if your computer can handle the extra processing needed, definitely run this in the high setting, as the increase is in detail is super noticeable. Shutter. Honestly, I'll leave this in auto. The rule for video is that you want your shutter speed to be double of what your frame rate is, but I just leave it in audio. EV comp. In order to help reduce the amount of blown out sections of video, especially in the sky, I set the EV comp to negative one. White balance. I feel like the Hero 8 does a much better job of maintaining the white balance than the Hero 7. Because of this, I leave it in auto. The worst thing I feel you can do is set your white balance completely wrong and end up with a blue or orange image. ISO minimum. Always set to the slowest setting you can go. So ISO 100 it is. ISO max. This setting is going to be very dependent on your scenario. ISO 1600 is good for most stuff, I feel like, but if you're going to be writing or filming when it's darker out, then max that thing out to 6400. Now let's talk sharpness. I prefer to add the sharpness back in when I'm color grading the footage, so I set the sharpness to low. And color. If you plan on color grading your footage, then go with the flat profile, as it'll give you a much higher dynamic range to work with on your footage. This way you don't get muddy shadows and you don't get blown out highlights. Raw audio. It's a super cool feature, but honestly, I just leave it off. The wind setting is huge if you're going to be using a wind cover. If you're using a cover, then set the camera to stereo so you maximize the audio quality here. If the camera switches into wind mode, the audio is going to be really bad. And a wind cover is this guy right here, or these little fuzzy bits over the microphone. 